This isn't one of my normal films, but I'm taking the opportunity to announce something quite exciting. I'm currently in the process of writing The Long Covid Handbook, which I'm co-authoring with Professor Danny Altman from Imperial. The book is going to be published by Cornerstone, an imprint of Penguin, and will have a wide release including an audiobook. Uh, the cover you see here is temporary, uh, we'll be working on artwork in the next few weeks and months. One of the issues at the moment with the subject of long COVID is that there is no central resource for people to turn to. The information is spread thinly out there out in cyberspace, with sources often conflicting and research being hard to track down. My intention with this book is to bring everything we've learnt in the last two years together to build one resource that people can come to which answers, hopefully, just about every question they might have. Here's a chapter list which will help give you an idea of the topics we'll be covering. First, what is long COVID? Then, who gets long COVID and why? Can children get long COVID? And how do we manage the complexities of that situation, especially if there's a parent who's suffering too? What's causing long COVID? The current theories and evidence for them. Gender bias in chronic illness and how to tackle it. The impact on your mental health. Why it's 100% not in your mind, but psychology is important. How to help the people around you and your GP understand what you're going through the top 10 tips for managing symptoms, what treatments are available, what does recovery look like, I know, sorry, there's 12 chapters, there's a few to get through, <laughs> there's a lot to cover, um, the emotional journey and how it might change your future life, what happens next in terms of research, treatment and prognosis for the condition. Like this channel, the book will be heavily focused on the science, and I'll be looking at a hierarchy of evidence for the subjects we address, from peer-reviewed published papers in well-regarded journals, to patient-led studies such as my own, through to the anecdotal. Even for the latter, we'll look at the science of why something might be the case, and how much stock we should put in it if we're seeing anecdotal reports that it might be beneficial. With a new condition like this, the simple fact is that the evidence-based medicine to define the condition hasn't been acquired yet, and people need treatment now. So what might work, what probably won't, and why, will all be talked about. I'll also be interviewing numerous experts in each subject field to make the book as comprehensive and definitive as it can possibly be. So, whilst I'm writing, you might need to forgive me if my output on this channel drops a bit. I will, however, endeavour to keep the content coming as best I can. Here's a quick word on the book from Professor Altman. For me, as somebody who spent my whole life working in immunology and viral immunology and autoimmunity, the idea that we could get together, you know, the two of us, and maybe you know, take people who are really um, at a loss at the moment and terrified and mystified and try and offer some illumination or some intelligence or some, some insight, um, I think is, um, you know, feels exciting and important. A quick word on who's the audience for the book. Well, it's everyone who's affected by the condition. So that's patients, their families, friends, caregivers, and clinicians, importantly, too. To what degree do you hope that this book might be read by other people in the medical community, be they researchers, be they academics, be they clinicians? And what do you hope it can achieve um, in that respect? Whether we're talking about... Um professionals in medicine or professionals in education, there's still quite a lot of um, scepticism out there um, about, well, you know, perhaps this is just something kind of psychological and, um, you know, people need to get a grip. Um, and if we can engage those attitudes um, and, um, you know, I'm guessing that people were saying that about all the glandular fever stuff, 15 or 20 years ago and you know I can now show them beautiful graphs on um, what happens to particular T-cell clonotypes and that's got nothing to do with psychology and everything to do with them um, you know um, reprodu reproductive times of lymphocytes um, so, so if we can get them into a kind of more um, rational frame of mind and a more logical place um, so that they can help us to put the right kind of mitigations in place that would be helpful I think. 
<laughs> I completely agree. If you've got any suggestions for topics you'd really love to see the book cover, then please do put them in the comments. This is still a work in progress, so there is room to include more if I can work it in. The release date is currently penciled for the 20th of October. I appreciate that that's not right now and I'd love to have it out right now too, but doing these things properly sometimes does take time. So there's one final thing I do want to say and that is a huge thank you to everybody for all of the support you've given me on this journey so far. Um, it's invaluable really and I'm not sure I'd have kept on digging into this condition and doing all the research I have done um, against all of the headwinds of health that we've all been facing unless I knew it was actually making some kind of difference. So I do want to say a huge thank you to all of you for all of the support you've offered and hopefully together uh, we can help each other find our way to recovery as soon as possible. Until next time.